Hi, everybody. Hey, I'm going to get into uh, a real quick recap of January, and then I'm going to get into what, especially the European model, is showing for February. And part of what I will point out is uh, the possible track of Arctic air versus Pacific air masses, meaning how cold we could get or not get. But first, as I wear my lumberjack attire, Welcome to Groundhog Day. So um, I love the whole, personally, I, I think it's a riot. The Punxsutawney Phil, the gentleman in the top hats and the top coats uh, in Pennsylvania, they proclaimed a shadow. That means no early, no early uh, spring because the groundhog is frightened by the shadow and goes down into the hole and sits there for six weeks. Here locally, our own National Weather Service office put up this fun post. They call this critter Larry. I think this is Larry. I'm pretty sure that's what they're referring to. I'm making a giant assumption. And there, Larry is seeing a shadow. So here locally, remember it was kind of sunny this morning. The same deal, no early spring. Anyway, we'll see if all of that uh, comes true. Okay, uh, I tell you what. One thing I totally missed on the forecast from yesterday is I, I, I thought it would be freezing this morning, but not see the same type of hard freeze. Not only did we see a hard freeze, but a few areas were actually colder this morning than we've been the last couple. I think that ended up being because the air mass is still incredibly dry and we really cleared out last night with light winds. And the temperatures, in fact, did plummet to the dew point. So the coldest in the metro area was out at the airport in Hillsborough. They hit 21 degrees. On the east side, I grabbed this photo from Camas Meadows Golf Course. I have a live camera out there as part of my resort network, network but I wanted to show you the frost uh, on the grass. Uh, there was a bit of an east wind at the airport in Trottel this morning. Otherwise, everybody was nice and quiet. Now, the dew point tonight, let's say that we don't really cloud up. I'm going to show you this in a moment. Let's say we don't really cloud up overnight. Um, the dew points come up to about 29 or 30. So even if it stays kind of partly cloudy and the clouds don't go solid tonight, um, I think the coldest anybody could get would be 27, 28. Now, weather models like cloudiness coming in, and they like us being more like 30 degrees to even 37, 38. So we'll, we'll see what the clouds do tonight. Okay, real quick. January climate report, and I've alluded to this. So the average high for the 31 days out of PDX turned out to be 48 degrees. That was about a degree above normal. The average low was 38. That was about two degrees above normal. Mean temperature is a combo of that. At 43, was about a degree and a half above normal. January was running three to four degrees above normal until we had the super cold lows from the air mass that moved in last weekend, and that cut that surplus all the way down to 1.4 degrees. Rainfall, this really surprised me. 3.34 was 1.69 inches below normal. And the reason why wasn't for a lack of days with rain. We had plenty of days with rain. But January 8th had 62 one-hundredths of an inch. That was the only day all month that produced a half of an inch of rain or more. So that is a surprising lack of kind of a moderate rain days. and certainly no heavy rain days. The peak wind was from the east, 39 sustained, 51 mile per hour gust. Um, and remember the first part of January? That's when California was just getting hammered with all that moisture. We were feeding off of the same low, but California had the jet stream plumes. That's where the heavy moisture just kept funneling and funneling into. And we had a surprising lack of heavy rain days. And I mentioned really highlighted by that January 8th uh, statistic. Okay, let's uh, talk about Mount Hood real quick. Pretty shot up there today. Looks like lots of people parking their cars up a timber line. 76% of normal snowpack as of this morning. So for this time of the year, we're down 24% of where we would like to be. In terms of bases for recreation purposes, they're fine. Timberline 87, Meadows 78, and Skibo has a 55-inch base. Remember California, all that moisture? The Tahoe Basin got hammered. So Kirkwood, which is a resort I really enjoyed when I was younger skiing, on the south end of Lake Tahoe, they have a base of 127 inches compared, compared to Timberline. They picked up 380 inches so far for the year, which is roughly 100 inches more of snow than what we've had here in the Northern Cascades, so a little bit of comparison. Still plenty of time to make this up, but uh, we need to get going. Hopefully we'll get some lower snow levels and some decent moisture into the month of February. Okay, hot off the presses as of yesterday, the new outlook from the National Weather Service, their projection temperature-wise for the month of February, warm in the east, below normal, the blue colors here in the west, including Oregon and Washington. This is on change. This is what they have been calling for. 
this is a bit unchanged. For the month of February, we were in the green zone. All of Oregon and Washington was projected to be wetter than normal. But now that's kind of backing off a little bit, especially here on the west side. So uh, we'll see if that comes true. I will tell you that uh, all the weather models I look at agree that February will be below normal temperature-wise by at least some. Um, I'm starting to become a believer in that the, the amount of moisture we get is really going to be in question. And that's part of why I think the uh, outlook from the National Weather Service and NOAA started to back off on any confidence of a wet February coming off of this dry month. So I put four panels of four different days. This is from the European model starting February 13th and then a slice of different days with the latest being February 26th. And what you're looking at, the contour lines or the upper uh, or pressure lines in the upper atmosphere at 18,000 feet, kind of the storm highways, if you will. Where you see the blue colors, those are cold troughs of low pressure. It's typically on the leading edge of these where you'd see the storm fronts, you'd have active weather and some low snow levels, you know, in terms of at least up in the Cascades, below Cascade Mountain Passes, so some good snowpack snow. The red areas are uh, above normal pressure heights, and often that can mean, if you don't have a temperature inversion, it's somewhat warmer. So February 13th, for quite a while now, I've been talking about the fact that um, somewhere around the 13th of February, we'd have a shot of some cold weather. I will tell you, there's still an active period expected to come in, but it does not look as cold as it one time did. But nonetheless, here we are, February 13th. You can see a new trough coming down, 536 millibar pressure height. Um, is north of where the polar jet would be. So two jet streams, the normal one, the 564 pressure height, and the colder one, uh, the, the uh, 546. So for this one, the main jet stream flows down here, it looks like, right along the California-Oregon border. You would think they have a chance to have maybe the most moisture with this particular system. We would be in the cold part of the storm, so whatever moisture we get would probably have a good chance of seeing snow down to maybe 2,000 feet in the mountains, or at least three, so that's good. All right, let's jump to uh, February 18th. This is interesting. This storm is right below when you see the enclosed contours is right off the North Oregon coast. But notice my arrow. I'm tracking this same storm from the 18th to the February 20th. And the point of my arrow is this storm does not come inland. It, it snuggles up against the coast and then drops south down into the California area. Part of what happened in January was when we did get these lows, they never held together and, and pushed inland. They either incredibly weakened, as they did, or they slid down the coast. That's what that one's doing. So my point is, all of a sudden, how much moisture are we going to end up getting from what looks to be a good, deep, strong, low-pressure center? Kind of tough to tell. Moisture amounts could be disappointing, but the snow levels will be relatively low. February 26th, here's a deeper low, 510. Now we're getting to the end of the month. This one, which is coming out of the Gulf of Alaska, looks like it might have a better chance to come inland and give us some decent moisture in the last few days of February. So all of this, are we going to be normal for February or below normal? That's becoming in question, but good evidence that we'll have enough cold snaps that uh, February will be at least normal to not below normal temperature-wise. One more point I want to make out. Um, um, in terms of Arctic air versus Pacific, we all know that if you get an air mass dropping straight down from the Arctic uh, through Canada and into our area, that's the coldest air we can get. I think we all know that if our air comes off the Pacific, that's more of a moderate flow air temperature-wise because it's coming over those 50-degree Pacific water temps, right? Now, we can get cold air coming out of the Gulf of Alaska, but that's not as cold as the Arctic air that was kind of mixed into our area going back to last weekend. So my point here is, if you go back to the 13th, this is cold air that's kind of come out of the Gulf of Alaska. If you go to the 18th, again, there's Arctic air over here in the east, but this again, when I watched the animation, which I'm not showing you, but when I did, this was coming out of the Gulf of Alaska. That's the same system. This one on February 26th, again, this is a deepening low that formed in the Pacific waters and then came in. So if all of this is correct, it would leave zero windows for Arctic air to come into our region. That doesn't necessarily mean snow chances are gone. We can have, we've had plenty of snowstorms, some systems that developed in the North Pacific and coming out of the Gulf of Alaska. But it is interesting to me that it's looking more and more like we would not have any Arctic air coming into our area, that we would be primarily looking at developing lows and Pacific air masses coming in. That would mean it's less likely that we would have low temperatures at any point in the month for the valley getting all the way down to about 20 degrees. So we'll see how all that works out. 
That's kind of my, my February outlook. Real quick, I do want to touch on tomorrow's weather. I've been talking about this low. This is off of the map uh, earlier this morning. This low pressure center, which is going to snuggle up to the coast. Let me get my bearings here. It's up on these satellite pictures to tell. Here's uh, the coastline. Here's Portland. This low is going to come snuggle up toward us. Um, and, and as it does, these systems um, will likely produce a period of some breezy to gusty south winds. Now, no watches or warnings are expected. It still looks like at most the coast tomorrow would see a 40-mile-per-hour wind gust to maybe a 50-mile-per-hour wind gust. That's not high enough for warning. And the valley is going to end up just seeing what we notice to be breezy winds, south winds 15 to 30 uh, running right up of the coast or right up the valley. But nonetheless, we'll, we'll keep an eye on what those winds are doing. Rain tomorrow, yes. Absolutely likely you get some major rainfall in your, at your house, but it doesn't look like a lot. For a metro valley up and down the I-5 corridor, two-tenths of an inch potential. Saturday is still a much milder day with highs in the mid-50s, clouds, calmer winds again, but just a trace of a light shower to maybe 500s. Sunday rain picks back up a quarter of an inch. Again, this is not solid rain. This is kind of showers or, or areas of rain kind of coming and going. There will be some dry time. So weekend rain totals average under half of an inch between tomorrow through Sunday. And then again, Friday, south winds gusting 40 to 50 at the coast, perhaps, and 15 to 30 miles per hour in the valley. Uh, well, that's about it. So um, we had the, the low temperatures in the 20s this morning. We're going to be upper 40s to maybe hitting 50 this afternoon. Tomorrow, I'm going 36. But again, if the clouds don't thin, if the clouds stay fairly thin, there could be some areas at least get down to 29 or 30 degrees tonight. Um, so we'll see. If the clouds thicken up, Portland will stay above freezing, a high of 48. Light rain on Saturday, and then Saturday moving forward, this is high confidence of pretty mild nights. 43 in the morning, 54 during the day with a light wind and not much rain. That's a really nice Saturday. Sunday rain picks up, 42 to 49. Monday, Tuesday, we get quiet again. Now, Tuesday, I've got 38 in Portland with some fog developing, but if you live in a usual cold spot, maybe you're down close to freezing again, but it wouldn't be much below that. And then the next system comes in on Wednesday. It still looks like there could be low snow levels on Wednesday down to 1,200 to 1,500 feet, something that we're keeping an eye on right now. Um, if you enjoy these videos, this one went a little bit long, but I took some time to recap January and give you my thoughts over the overall flow pattern uh, for February. Hope you enjoyed uh, that talking, uh, my talking points on that. Hit the subscribe button. Please tell your friends to check out my YouTube channel at Rod Hill Weather, my weather site that you can keep updated behind.